Welcome to the National Drug Screen video blog series. Today on our video blog series, we're gonna be talking about DOT testing and random consortiums. A guest in our studio with us today is Mr. Joe Riley, president of National Drug Screening. Uh, he's been in the industry since 1993, has a wealth of knowledge and information, so welcome to the program today, Joe. Thank you, Tom, appreciate being here. Excellent, and, and somebody who's been around with all the evolutions of DOT testing, you have a lot of insight uh, into those areas. So whenever drug testing comes up, it seems like DOT is always mentioned. So why is that the case? Well, it's interesting, Tom. When I got into drug testing back in 1993, I really didn't know anything about DOT drug mm -hmm. testing. But soon afterwards, I got a call from FedEx, and they asked us if we could help them with some of the drug testing and alcohol testing of right. their drivers in the local area where we are. But the reason DOT drug testing comes up when you hear anything about drug testing is because in the DOT world, transportation-related companies that are regulated by the United States Department of Transportation are actually required by law to have DOT drug and alcohol testing programs. Right, and so one of the things that, that we get calls on and we hear about quite often is uh, brought up with that is consortiums. Everybody knows the, the term, or at least in DOT, they may not understand the term, but they hear it and that's what they're asking for. So what exactly is a consortium and why is that important in, in drug testing? Good question, Tom. So we talk about a consortium and we talk about a standalone drug testing random pool. And the consortium is where we take different companies, we put them all in a group, and now we have one big pool of employees in order to select from for the required random testing. Now that's typically beneficial for smaller companies, particularly owner operators, which is only one driver, smaller companies with five or 10 drivers. When we get into the larger trucking companies, which we service a lot of those, um, those typically do a standalone DOT drug and alcohol testing program, and their random testing pool is just their own employees rather than mixed in with other companies' employees. Well, and that leads into a, to a question, too, we get sometimes when maybe a company is part of that consortium and they have not had any drivers selected, and they want to know, they're, they're concerned they're not in compliance. So, so exactly how does that work from a, from a compliance standpoint in meeting those requirements? Yeah, absolutely. So compliance is very important, and the DOT has strict regulations, and so the random testing pool has to test 25% of the drivers for drugs on an annual basis and 10% of the drivers for alcohol. So if we take a random consortium and we have a whole bunch of companies and let's say they all have one driver and that equals 100 drivers in the pool, we're gonna test 25 of those drivers for drugs and 10 of those drivers for alcohol and everybody's in compliance regardless of whether their employee got picked or not. Okay, and so when, the, when they're making those selections and they do get chosen, what happens from that point? Because that's one of the, the challenges that comes up too, is everybody thinks, well, I've got a selection list, somebody's been selected, I've got to send them right this second, so I need to go track them down and send them right away. How is that really supposed to work and kind of what's the, the purpose behind that? Yeah, Tom, there's a lot of misconceptions about that. So when a random test selection is run, typically at the beginning of the month or at the beginning of a quarter, a list of drivers that's been selected is produced and sent to the company. The company now has the obligation to send those drivers for a test on a random basis when those drivers are available, not necessarily right now, today. Now, there is a lot of confusion. Sometimes people think, well, you let them know, Tom, you've got to go for your random drug test, you have 24 hours. That is not true. There's no 24-hour window, there's no two-hour window. A random drug test, upon notification, you are to go immediately. Now with owner-operators, they work for themselves. So our staff here notifies those drivers, and we typically do that early in the morning, and we notify them and say, you've been selected for your drug test, and you need to proceed immediately for that drug test. Yeah, that, that's something that's very important because there are some severe consequences that, and repercussions if they don't proceed immediately, and that comes up from time to time. Absolutely. So violations of the DOT regulations 
can cause penalties of up to $10,000 per occurrence. Besides, it's a safety issue and a liability issue. Because if somebody's driving on the roads and they are under the influence of drugs or alcohol, and the random test could have detected that, and it didn't, now a lot of liability can occur on the part of the company that employs that driver. Right, and that's not specifically for the DOT regulated companies, but those procedures and processes kind of carry over for best practices, even though they're not necessarily required for non-DOT regulated companies. So that is, would it be fair to say that, that DOT kind of set the guidelines for best practices for some of the non-DOT testing as well? Yeah, often for many years, we've called the DOT drug and alcohol testing program the gold standard. And it is a best practice for all employers to follow. And again, that liability is not just for DOT regulated employers. Any employer can be held responsible for actions of their employees. And particularly perhaps if they're negligent and not following best practices for a sound drug and alcohol testing program. Excellent. Well, Joe, appreciate you sharing that with us. I know that a lot of people have had questions about a lot of those specific areas, which is where a lot of these questions came from. So hopefully that's helped you figure out uh, maybe some answers to the questions you had or maybe brought some situations up that maybe you needed to address in your policy or within your company. So thanks for joining us on the NDS video blog series. You can see more of our videos and educational materials at www.nationaldrugscreening.com. Just click on the blog. And that's really the authoritative source for accurate answers uh, relating to pretty much any drug testing question you have. So thanks for joining us and stay tuned for our next video.